since you've clicked on this video i'm going to take a wild guess at who you are as a hacker and bug bounty hunter you are probably someone who is either struggling with submitting their first valid finding or you're just in this constant loop of finding nothing that is either informative or being marked as a duplicate so if i got this right you have to do me a favor you have to drop a subscribe click that subscribe button and become a homie and in return, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some habits and some skills that I think you need to have in order to become a successful bug bounty hunter, web hacker, or just someone who wants to find and file this first valid bug. A lot of time what I see from a lot of people is that they think that they're not a successful bug bounty hunter or they're not good at web hacking or just hacking in general but outside of bug bounty hunting is because they don't have either the knowledge or they're not putting the amount of effort as they should. And I, while I think the two of those play a huge role, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I think there's also a little bit more than that. And I think the most important thing outside of knowledge and effort is to have the right amount of focus, as well as having a structure in a way where you're gonna achieve your goals. So let's just jump into it. The first thing I mentioned in the whole video is having the right amount of knowledge. A lot of times I see that a lot of hackers, a lot of bug bounty hunters, whether it's from their write-ups, whether it's just from their behaviors and the questions they ask me, is that they rely on copy-pasting payloads. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with copy-pasting payloads. If you understand how they work, you understand why those payloads are created the way they are. There's nothing wrong with that, but a lot of times, a lot of you don't know why they work and how they work. And in case you have to tweak something, you get stuck and you can't actually tweak that payload to make it work in the context that you need it. So for example, if you're copy pasting someone's XXC payload into your own and it's not working, maybe there is a reason, maybe the place you're injecting your payload isn't the right place to use the payload from somebody else. So this is not to talk down on uh, GitHub repositories like a Payload Everything. You should go use those. But first and foremost, you need to understand why these things work and why they are crafted and created the way they are before you just start to copy paste. So keep that in mind. Stop copy pasting things. Go understand why they work, how they are created, why they are created a specific way before you copy paste them. So in the future, you can tweak them and use them for your personal use case. Which the next thing about the knowledge thing is, I think there is a lack of knowledge because there are enough resources like your try hack me hack the box or even the free resources like your websick academy through your hacker 101 there's enough resources to understand these different concepts but it's just a matter of how in depth you understand these topics before you can actually use them so in theory I understand that a lot of people know what an XSS is, what is an SSRF or what is an IDOR, but a lot of times people can't explain why these vulnerabilities happen and how to fix them. And honestly, having this understanding of knowing why these vulnerabilities work, how developers can fix them, gives you a better understanding of how to look for them because now you can start thinking about how the developers may have thought about fixing or actually preventing from this vulnerability to happen and finding ways around it. So if you're just getting into web hacking, your goal is to become a top hacker, your goal is to become a AppSec engineer, whatever the goal is, you really need to understand these vulnerabilities in depth. So not just how to look for them and exploit them, but you also need to understand how developers get ahead of them and prevent them or fix them to get a better understanding of these vulnerabilities. And honestly, it gives you an advantage in overall when it comes down to hacking. So that's the knowledge portion of this video that I wanted to talk about. You really need to look at the knowledge of hacking, not just as to look at vulnerabilities and exploiting them by copy pasting payloads, but really understanding why do they work, how do they work, how they're prevented, and how these payloads work in order to exploit them. And not being able to do all that is going to eventually bring you to a dead end. And I think that's what a lot of people get burnt out and they don't find vulnerabilities or they don't get to go to the next level. The second thing that I mentioned in my video earlier was the lack of effort and effort could mean a lot of things, but when it comes down to bug bounty hunting and just web hacking or becoming good at something in anything that you want to build the habit is that you have to be consistent. You have to consistently want to put in the effort and the time to look for vulnerabilities, to learn these different subjects and get good at them. And honestly, 
a lot of people suck at bug bounty hunting or they give up too early because they don't want to spend enough time on a single program. I think Justin, uh, aka Ryan Raider, he posted this tweet right here where, where he said that he recommends spending, I think, anywhere between 16 to 18 hours on a bug bounty program before you find your first vulnerability. And now let me tell you why that's important because I think it takes more than a couple of hours just to understand the nature of a web application. So that means what is this application supposed to do? What are these different functionalities? What are the different injection points? What are the different things I can exploit? The threat model and so on. So a lot of times I see that people are giving up way too quickly because they're not finding any vulnerabilities within the first few hours. Or even worse, a lot of you not only rely on payloads, but you're also relying on too much automation. So not only to spend more time on looking for vulnerabilities on a single program, but you also need to forget about all these automations, all these stupid one-liners that people use before you actually find your first vulnerability. So for example, I've seen a lot of times on Twitter, people post these ridiculous one-liners where it says, hey, use this one-liner to find all the subdomains, all of the subdomains endpoints, and then feed it to some random tool that either looks for cross-site scripting, looks for SQL injection, and so on. I need you to forget about all of those, and I need you to really focus on finding the right methodology for you that works for you in order to find his vulnerabilities and just forget about using nuclei for now forget about these one-liners and really really focus on finding vulnerabilities manually mastering how to look for them how to fix them and how to explain them to someone non-technical and the last thing that i think a lot of people need to really think about is what i mentioned you need to focus and you need to have the right structure in your life in order to become good at any habit and anything you do in life, you need to have structure and really a way to focus. The biggest thing for me was to actually take my phone and be able to put it aside and not go on it for a long time, dropping down my little menu right here and putting my phone completely into focus mode and not worrying about anybody else and anybody trying to get a hold of me and it just honestly zoning out and putting my headphones on and working on what I'm working but also taking it a step further and saying that this is my goal for this month for the next six weeks eight weeks whatever that timeline is and saying that I'm going to learn x in that time frame so for example if you're new to web hacking or you know these concepts or basic concepts you want to get better i want you to sit down and say hey in the next four to six weeks i'm going to dedicate all my free time all the free time that i have outside of my family time outside of my gym my mental health and all that stuff to learning cross-site scripting so go look at all these different free resources like your hacker 101 go on website academy look at all the cross-site scripting resources they have look up additional cross-site scripting challenges and labs and really understand how they work and then go on and finding a vdp or a vuln disclosure program where you can look for vulnerabilities for free and get recognized for your work or even better looking at a bug bounty program and finding those vulnerabilities so do me a favor i really need you to think about the structure this is the times this is the hours i'm going to put in maybe you give up playing counter-strike or giving up call of duty Warzone for a couple of days or a couple of hours a day to dedicate that free time into looking for these vulnerabilities in order to become much better at them so before we wrap up the video here is what i think you should do pick one bug type that you want to get good at look at all the resources for it understand how they're vulnerable understand how the different playloads are created for it and also do all the different resources you can and then move to phase two where you pick a vdp let's say you want to hack on gm or ibm and you set a goal to find three four or five cross site scriptings and you don't give up until you find those and then next month or the next phase is finding another vuln type so for example idor now and then you do the same thing on ibm you do nothing but look for cross site scripting and idor because you have done all the labs you have done all these different resources and then you keep adding on more and more while you create your own methodology and how you approach web applications but also do me a favor if you haven't already like this video if you enjoyed it if you are kind of like the content that i'm making drop me a comment tell me what else you want me to create content on or maybe if you want a part two of this video drop me a part two tell me if this video helped and i'll try my best to make a part two to explain more in depth of what to do and how to become better at bug bounty and hacking all right that's it i will see you all in the next video peace